There we go. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll make sure to send you a link and uh, I'll send a link to the last, last year's training too, because we covered a lot of good stuff last year as well. Um, how's everybody doing? Fine. Good. Yeah. Good. Bye. Hi. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Long time. Hey. Yeah. Sorry, I finally figured out how to unmute myself. So I'm going to mute me again. <laughs> That's fine. Good. All right. Thanks. Good. Good. Good to see everybody. Um, I guess we'll get we'll get started a while. If if you have any questions at any point, this is just an informal meeting. I really don't think we're going to need two whole hours. So, but um, you know, uh, good time to cover things that we have questions on. I'm going to bring up a PowerPoint. Okay. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I can see it. Oops. There we go. Great. So today we are going to cover some digital resources as well as um, tips for searching databases that we have here at the History Center. And uh, we're going to start with some digital resources, and then we're going to get into past perfect after that. So we can get kind of start with the broad and then get a little more specific uh, as far as searching for things goes. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we have so many resources here in the library that we don't expect everyone to be a, you know, master everything that we, we share. Um, that's why we have such a good team here that we can all work together um, and help each other because there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of great resources here and we all have slightly different expertise. So to start off, um, just talking in general about uh, genealogy resources. Um, you're familiar with the, the basics as far as um, what we have to offer, starting with the family files, the cards, um, the published genealogies. Um, this is taken from our training session. And I just wanted to highlight at the bottom where it says we have our subscriptions, which are Ancestry.com, Fold3, which if you're not familiar with Fold3, is a military records database run by Ancestry, and Newspapers.com. Now, many of you have used um, all three of these things but they are helpful when you have researchers coming in, especially researchers that uh, haven't done a lot of genealogy um, or and haven't actually themselves been exploring ancestry. Um, Newspapers.com is great. We have a site just for the York County papers, uh, keyword searchable. If you need any help learning how to navigate that or the staff is happy to help you. Um, we are also happy to report that we're sending a shipment of some of our smaller papers into newspapers.com, which are mostly uh, 19th century papers like the York Recorder, I believe the York Republican, a um, bunch of smaller papers that I've been told can be very useful for genealogy. Right now we have those papers on microfilm but uh, once newspapers.com is finished with them, they'll be keyword searchable as well. Um, Who are you sending them to? Ancestry. They go Ancestry. to Utah. They go to Ancestry, um, their headquarters, and they're the ones that scan them and put them on newspapers.com. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, here's a photo of our public computers. It's a little older. Computers are looking a little dated. <laughs> and we've moved some things around, of course. But we do have our public computers 
for people uh, to use. And, you know, if they do not, um, if they bring a laptop with them, we do have Wi-Fi and they can access our databases on their laptops in the reading room. That means they can access Ancestry, Fold3, and newspapers.com. Uh, they can also get into family search uh, with our password. The only thing they can't access is our internal networks like the uh, PassPerfect and some of our, create, our databases that we've created in-house that I'll show you. Um, just to note that there are many of the resources that we, we have, okay. This, this is a note to say that we have so many archival resources. You can see a list here of the types of things that we may have in the archives here, but you'd be surprised how many of these are actually, have actually been digitized. So there are websites where you can find things like photographs, maps, yearbooks, and um, you know, we recommend getting familiar with the York County Archives website the State Archives website, uh, Family Search, and, um, and others to try to locate uh, other York County resources. Here's some pictures. Okay. So just uh, moving on. Now, um, yeah, I've just another thought about that. Uh, many of the archival resources are available um, on websites like Family Search. In fact, a lot of our county records uh, are available on Family Search. A lot of the census data is available on Ancestry and that sort of thing. There's also the Family History Center, which I believe has a good website as well, but you'll find a lot of local records on Family Search and Ancestry. Now, what we're seeing here, this is a photo of our public drive. Some of you might not have um, gotten into this yet, but on most of the public computers, in fact, all the public computers should have a folder called the public drive. And this is where you find the shortcuts to Ancestry, newspapers.com, and a bunch of other websites. In fact, there are hundreds of websites uh, that we've shared under a folder called Internet Shortcuts, which you can see here. Um, this is just a snapshot of some of those sites, um, but these are all things you might wanna think about for your research. And again, um, County Archives, Family History Center, Family Search, these are all important websites to think about. And in addition to genealogy sites, we also have many local history organizations, um, organizations like uh, NECHIP, which is the Northeastern York County, um, Preservation Society. Um, they have an, an amazing website for the area of Manchester and other points north. Um, and these are things that you can, people you can consult or, and that we consult when we can't find the resources we need here at our facility. Any questions so far about just internet resources. I know this is kind of an overview. Um, you said about the history of uh, Northern York County. Mm -hmm. Is that hyperlink on that for that site as well on the uh, public drive or yes. that's somewhere else? Right. Yes, it is. It is. Um, if you have any trouble finding it, you just let, let us know and we'll make sure to bring that up for you. 
Now, other things you can see on the left hand side here that there are many other things on the public drive, including some databases related. We have one on Civil War soldiers, one on World War II veterans. And these are um, databases where you can enter the names of veterans and see um, information about them that has been collected over the years uh, by folks like June Lloyd and others. So when you, it, it would be best um, to take your time and look through this, but actually I can, I can stop sharing and go into the public drive just to show you in a little more detail what's in there. Uh, just give me a moment. Oh, oh. And for those of you that are familiar with the Family Search website, we've recently become a Family Search affiliate, which means that our library has access to records that, um, that you might not have access to at home. So uh, when you're in the library using our password, you can access a lot of resources that way. Okay. So here's the actual public drive. Can you all see that? Okay. So just to go through some of these resources with you, again, here's the internet shortcuts link. Uh, alphabetical, you know, it really goes on forever. So take your time with it. We have sites like Indian Steps Museum, the Manchester Township Historical Society. Um, and I'm not seeing knee chip on there, so I need to add that one. So that's a really good one. Red Nicole, it is. Nicole, it is there. It's named it? Northeastern something. Okay. There yeah, it North is. Eastern Northeastern York, yeah. York County. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I knew it was in there. <laughs> so if we don't have something here at the History Center, maybe one of these smaller organizations would have uh, information. So good stuff on there. Uh, other things we have, if you go to Cemetery Index, these are just scan pages of uh, Lila's Cemetery map, uh, along with the uh, indexes. You wouldn't need that necessarily when you're on site, but it could be useful. Uh, this is the Civil War database. Uh, and World War II database. This is not the Dennis Brandt database, if you're familiar with that one. That's available only on our website, and I'll talk more about that later. But we do have a Civil War soldier database that June Lloyd's been keeping over the years that you're welcome to try out. And there are many, many records in here. Thousands, tens of thousands, so lots of people listed here. Another useful resource is the USCT troops spreadsheet. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a very big database. It's actually a big spreadsheet, but you can key keyword search it. The nice part about this information is that most of this is also available. These are actual files that we have uh, in the archives, individual soldiers' pensions. But it pulls all the information out in a convenient place for people to look at. And then the World War II database is again, similar where it's by name, so you can search by last name and see a number of World War II veterans, mostly information taken from obituaries. Okay. 
Uh, there are other finding aids to the collection. Uh, they're kind of random, but um, the things that you see listed here are different uh, descriptions of things that we have in the collection. Like for instance, we have Af Guide to African-American Collections. This one's relatively recent that we've put together, but it's a nice guide. And again, all, all these things that you're seeing here are in past perfect. But if you wanted to look at a guide, just pulling a lot of information um, right in front of you, this is a one place to look. And a number of these are actually on our website. So people at home could take a look at these as well. Revolutionary War era records. Um, this is a particular collection related to the Revolutionary War. Again, all these are in past perfect now. They were not last year, but I had an intern uh, just this year add all these documents related to the Revolutionary War into past perfect. Did any questions on the public drive? Has anyone ever used it, found it useful? Maybe not, but uh, it's worth checking out. Um, and again, if you need, if you have any questions or, or want to, any questions later after you get a chance to look at it, uh, just yell. And we also have our website. Let's see, okay. So this is the York County History Center website. Most of the, most of the things on our website can be found either on Past Perfect or on that public drive. The only thing on the website that I can think of that is not found anywhere else but our website is the Dennis Brandt Civil War Database. And that's under military research. So it's a particular database of Civil War soldiers. And it can be found here. There's also a second one done by Scott Mingus just on Civil War civilian damage claims. But the more popular one is the Dennis Brandt. And this one, you can search a name. I'm just going to put in Smith. And then you'll come up with the veterans that he's compiled information for. If you find a name, you go to the right to details. And this is the kind of information that Dennis has compiled on all these veterans. Now, as far as I've been told, there's a couple thousand veterans listed here. We are working with Dennis right now to try to get access and help him um, upload basically his revised database which I, I'm told has close to 25,000 veterans um, from York County and surrounding counties. So that's a, an exciting project we're working on now. And I, we hope to have that, that for you as a resource. Oh, sorry. So as far as other things on the um, website, most of this is helpful for people to get some idea at home of what we have on site. And, or if you are at home and would like to just look at through peruse through some of these resources, that's fine too. Um, 
In fact, if you go under gene library genealogy research, you'll be able to look up family reports. You can put in a name and find out if we have a genealogical report on that family. You can look at a list of those. And excitingly, we were just this year able to upload the surname database. So again, if I put in, well, this time I'm gonna, well, I'll put in Smith. Uh, it gives you it gives you a lot of related Smith type records. Many Smiths. A lot of Smiths. Um, that's okay. There's usefulness to this, and the good news is it gives you a variation on the left and a, the that uh, slash oh, and then the control name on the right. So that's very helpful. When did this go up, Nicole? Uh, a couple of months ago. But uh, okay. I guess I missed that. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> and we've been kind of busy. So if I, <laughs> if I didn't share it with you, so, in fact, it seems to have been improved since the last time I looked at it. The last time okay. I looked at it, it did not give you all the variations. So this is good news. This is like... A lot well, of variations. The great thing about this is, um, uh, I don't, I don't know how many volunteers handle patron inquiries on this. I know that, uh, I know that Brian and I got a lot of them, but we can just direct people to this from now on when they're curious. Uh, because usually, you know, I get a phone call or an email, and then I look it up, and they send, yeah, this is what we have, and so forth and so on. But mm -hmm. people can. We just we'll just direct them right to this and they can type in their variation right they can because i also got like this happened over it was on saturday um i, I don't remember the surname but uh the guy gave me the surname and um you know i wrote it down on the on the pull slip and he said oh well it actually has a ck in the end and they said yeah but the, this is the control spell it's like oh okay so I know some people question that. They say, oh, yeah, but but that's a very different family. It's like, yeah, but that's not how we do things. So yeah. anyway. Yeah, this is the way. It'll show people the way we have our files organized. And it, it is interesting because I'm still working with the website uh, folks, the website hosts that we have to make this more usable. It's one reason why we haven't actually advertised it to the public. Is okay. Because it okay. was functioning that well for a little while, but now it this is this is great. Um, this is bringing up all the variations, and if you go to the right and click on details, you get the control number. Perfect. So perfect. Again, it's a resource that you don't necessarily have to use in the library, but it's great for people at home or for yourself at home to prepare for your visit. Um, weird question. Yes. But what would happen if you searched for the number? Well, let's see. It worked. It, it, okay. I think it worked, yeah. Okay. So Adam suggested putting in the control number and here it's given, giving the great. variations. That's great. So we could, I was just going to say, we could use this instead of going to the spreadsheet now, okay. looking up the control number when somebody comes in looking for something. Yeah. Yeah. Just pull this up or yeah. have it set on one of the computers. Now, how, when would this get updated? When I put the stuff or make changes to this, the data bit or the spreadsheet or? That's, that's the rub is, um, database is going to be more accurate because we can't give every change to the web people as as they happen in okay. fact i would i'm planning to give them a whole letter at a time so once we do all the updates for h for example right. i can give them that 
that update and they could update the whole page. Okay. That's the plan. Um, this is very much still in- It's a work in progress. Yeah, development. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping it works as smoothly as, as I would like it to. Um, Nicole, I did have a patron last week that came in with the file number and now I know where she got it. So they are using it already. Great. Yeah, I'm very, I know this is something that, that you know, Lila and I talked about doing years ago and I think we're finally getting there as far as um, being able to communicate with the web host what we need for this database. Um, some other resources on the website, we have the South Central publication list. We have a description of the Hively books here, um, as well as indexes to the volumes. So if you click on these links here, you'll get um, indexes to the township volumes. So that could be very helpful for folks at home as well. And that's one of our goals is to keep adding useful resources um, to the website to help folks that aren't able to come in person. Just to jump down to our collections, this is our online databases, and these are our photo databases. This is where folks can go. Again, this is exactly what's in Past Perfect. In fact, it is just a version of Past Perfect, um, but it's where folks at home can pull up the Bibles certain, and certain other photo collections postcards, mills, schoolhouses, et cetera, um, as well as the dump woof drawings, which are extremely popular. Um, and, and we get calls and emails about them all the time, people that would like to buy copies. So when you click on one of these links to the online databases, it takes you to a version of Past Perfect that's on our website. It's a little hard to search, but you know, it's you could even browse it a little more easily than search it. Uh, again, you know, for these kind of photo databases, I'd recommend using Past Perfect instead. It's a little more user friendly, I think. But then this is great information for people at home to get a head start. Okay. Any questions on the website? Nope. Um, Nicole, I was just wondering if um, if there is anything on our YouTube channel about all these online resources from our website, or and if there isn't, is there a plan to kind of do something so that? you know, people who might be from out of town and want to, you know, come research yeah. here, um, you know, might want to prepare by looking at our YouTube channel. You know, that's, that's great that you mentioned that because there, there is, um, you know, especially uh, back when we were on pandemic uh, hours, um, we, Adam and I did some webinars on our resources. Uh, mm -hmm. But there is actually one that I did in October for the Genealogy Society that is an overview of all of our genealogy resources on both on site and online. And it was suggested that I put a link to that um, on the website. It's yeah. a YouTube page, but if you yeah. don't know how to find it, it might be a little more difficult to find. So. I can put a link on our genealogy page here, you know, 
for a video introduction to our resources, you know, click here. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, good. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot on here. But um, one of the main reasons I brought you all together today is to look at past perfect in a little more detail because it seems like it's hard to get to uh, when we're trying to do training of all of our resources. So I'm gonna jump into past perfect. And we can go through that. Okay. Alrighty, so this should be, this should look familiar to everyone. In fact, I'm going to exit out of this screen, which is the lower right corner. And then this is your, in case nobody brought up your search, keyword search feature, this is your first menu that comes up for past perfect. Um, there are options on here that are useful. On the left, you can go into catalogs, photo catalog, uh, archives, and library. The difference between archives and library, uh, well, library is all of our published books, published and unpublished books that get call numbers and are in the library collection. Archives is everything else. Library catalog also has microfilm in it. This is a nice option if you know that you're just looking for a photo and you actually have the number. If you have a number for a file and all you gotta do is go into one of these catalogs and hit find, which is the button right here in the middle with the little binoculars. This will bring up an object ID find option. One, two, I'm gonna look up one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we don't have a photo with that number, fine. But we do have one, two, three, eight, oh. So there he is. <laughs> so that's a nice feature here under find. And the find feature actually has other options with this drop down uh, that you could try searching. For instance, you, you're looking for a book and you know the author's last name. Uh, well, you'd have to be in the library catalog for that, but um, it does have features like that that you can use. And, but for the most part, the keyword search is your best friend. This is the button down here that says research by keyword. And this, is, this makes it a lot easier to find anything that you need. Uh, the first step would be to go up here to the top right corner and narrow down your catalogs. The more catalogs that you have checked, the longer your search is gonna take. So if you, if you know for a fact that you only need a photograph or a library book, you can unselect these other things. All right. So let's see, we need a library book. Does anyone have a topic or, or a place? Let's see. Um, to just pick a township, to like Manchester Township. Okay. Manchester. I'm not going to put the word township in just in case uh, there are, in case the word township is not spelled out. Um, in fact, past perfect's a little finicky. What you enter here in the yellow box has to be exactly, exactly what's in the record. Um, 
So actually, I'm going to stop sharing this for a moment and go back to the PowerPoint that I have, because I did ha I did put some tips together for searching past perfect for you. Bear with me. Here we go. Okay. Can y'all see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Oh, heck, sorry. There we go. So here, here's a, a view that shows the past perfect ser keyword search box. And then some tips for searching here at the bottom. So I have select your catalogs. I have, and then I have start simple. Um, for, for genealogy purposes, you can search a last name. Uh, I would try different spellings, of course. Um, but you'd be surprised at everything that you could find by searching a last name in Past Perfect. For instance, uh, any photographs that have been donated under that family name will come up. Um, any personal papers, you know, there's, you know, miscellaneous deeds and certificates in our collection that have been donated. Um, so it's always good when you're helping a patron with genealogy to look up the surname in Past Perfect just to see what we have. It would also give you other you know, books in the collection as well. As, you know, it'll give you a list of everything in the local genealogy collection, family genealogies, as well as other places. Uh, there's a tip here not to use any articles like a, an, and, or the, um, or abbreviations. Again, Past Perfect is extremely specific and not very intuitive. It's not like Google that's going to give you something that's similar. And it takes a little practice. Uh, and that's where this um, last tip comes in, which is to use an asterisk before after words. Um, this is especially important when your word might be plural or possessive. Uh, if you want to look up, like, say, a hoax store or hoax school, it will not find it if you put the word hoax in, if there's an apostrophe S on the end in the record. So it gets a little crazy, but with an, with some practice, it can be done. That can all, you can only put that on either the beginning or the ending. You can't put that on both sides. Is that correct? Um, that strips. You can try it here. I'll try it on Manchester. Um, it's mainly just to make sure there's nothing else before or after that word. And no, it didn't like that. No. Okay. So before, not so much. After though, it will like that. Okay. It'll take it. <clears throat> and that's just in case for in, that, you know, for some reason there's a plural involved. Right. Again, this is just lot, the library collection that we're looking up because that's all we selected at the top. So you actually have 73 records here and you can scroll down and take a look at, at the options that have come up. Granted, not all of these are about Manchester Township, but it does give you some interesting options. This is a, um, let's see. Yeah, this is a uh, yearbook. That's Northeastern, that's Northeastern's yearbook. Right. Yeah. So that's interesting. So it's great to look up places. You get all kinds of things. Um, let's try a last name. Any uh, ideas you want to throw out? Uh, 
I was looking up Smizer earlier today. I know that there are a lot of uh, records for that name, and there are also there's also a school, um, okay. but that's one of those where uh, there are a lot of inconsistencies in the way things are put in, especially with the schools, schoolhouses. Uh, a lot of them don't have an apostrophe. It just has an S after it. Right. Well, and that's where your asterisk is really important right. because of because there are inconsistencies with how people have added the, entered the data over the years. So your asterisk will bring up anything with an S, with an apostrophe, with a dash, anything that might have been tacked on to the end of your word um, as such. Um, now, again, I'm looking in library, so this is going to be mainly genealogy. But you can see just how many things mention the Smizers. A lot. 76 hits. And it's not like all these are going to be useful, um, but you never know. Like a biography of Andrew Jackson, probably not. But for some reason, the name Smizer pops up in that. Maybe donated by. It's possible. Yes. We had a full view of the elephant. What is that? Let's see. If you double click on the title, it'll bring up the full description of the book. Okay. This is apparently a local history that mentions a Henry Smizer and the gold rush. Pretty cool. Oops, sorry. Um, now I'm gonna just switch over to the archives catalog just to show you what pops up there. Again, you'll, you'll, there is a little note here to, you know, can try using a asterisk. They call it a wild card search, but it's definitely increases your chances of finding records. Here's the archives catalog. It's a little, it's set up a little differently. On the left, you have your object numbers, your manuscript numbers, and then you have your collection name which is your main subject area. Your title is either gonna be the same or it might be a sub, like a sub subject to the first name. So a lot of mentions, 400 mentions, including the name Smizer in there. You can get an idea looking over at the title if those, if the year's about right for you or not. For instance, here's a folder on an Edward Smizer, Smizer and it gives his, his dates there on the right. So again, just to reinforce that if you're helping someone with genealogy, it's really a good idea to check to see what we have in the archives. Any questions so far? Um, Nicole, could I don't know if everybody knows how to do this. It's really easy, but if yeah. you do a search, say, say you do uh, probably not something like Smizer or Smith, but if you do something that pulls up fewer sources or yeah, fewer records, you can search multiple catalogs. And there's yes. also a way to select so that archives is together and libraries together. And then yeah. it, you can browse the whole thing at the same time. Let's try that. So we're gonna do all three catalogs together. Um, 
Maybe something a little less prominent. Mm. Uh, What's a town in York that's kind of small and Delta. Delta. Let's see. I'm going to put an asterisk, even though it's probably not necessary for Delta. But let's see what pops up. Okay. All righty. So when you do a search with all the catalogs selected, you get a chronological listing based on the object number, which is fine. Adam pointed out that if you only want to see photographs within this or archives, you can click on this little square, which is right below this, the search results name here. And you can sort by catalog. So here we have a listing of all the archives collection. And if you scroll down, then it gives you all the books in the library, followed by all the photographs. So as you can see, there's a lot here. So if you would click it again, then it would go instead of um, the opposite direction. So A to Z, then it would go Z to A. Um, this does not. I'm trying it. it. Nope. <laughs> it only gives you A first. If you want to go back and look at numbers, you just have to click go, object. Right. And this will give you back, go back to your chronological listing, which can be helpful. Because mm -hmm. here you can yeah. see the photographs that are in the same collection as the manuscript right. file. Cole, you're probably planning to do it, but you can show them clicking on view images can give them thumbnails of any photos that have been scanned. Yes, this is my next, uh, my next thing. Uh, you can click on the collection as well and get alphabetical listing by collection name. Although that's slightly less useful, I've found. But it could be helpful if you're looking for just a particular name. Um, and as Loanne mentioned, there's this great feature here on the left called View Images. And that brings up thumbnails. So any record that has scans in it, it'll bring up the first scan in the record. And you can look, you can click through down here at the bottom. And granted, it's not going to tell you what it is, but if you're just looking for something quickly, like a baseball team in Delta, oh, look, here's one. Uh, if you double click on the thumbnail, yeah. it'll take you to the record. Delta baseball team 1920. There they are. And if you wanna see that picture close up, you just go over to this thumbnail and click on image management and there it is. Sometimes there are more than one photo scanned in for a record and it's not always intuitive that there are more. Um, yeah. so when you go into that, uh, when you go into that view, you can look to see if, um, if the right arrow is, is blackened in, and then you can just advance through all the photos that are in there. Yeah. Let me, let me see if I can show you, for instance, uh, this one here, this is, these, you can see that these are all photographs, except for this one, which is the manuscript file. This probably has multiple scans right. in it. 
under this topic. So if you double click here, yeah, one of the one of file. And you can see up here in the corner that it says one of 10. So you can either click the arrow here to see them or go into the image management and click the arrow here to see all 10 of the scans, which appear to all be from one ledger. Mm. But yeah. But it's still a really nice feature to be able to look at the thumbnails in this in this way. Any questions on what we've looked at so far? Okay. All right. Another search uh, idea. Anybody? If you know a file number, you can search for the file number. And then I always use the asterisk to make sure I pick up any subfiles under that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is the way you could do it. Um, let's see. Let's try Chansford Township, which is 129. Now, I don't usually search for numbers because you can do that by going right into the catalog, but, but you're right, this will bring up any um, photographs and manuscript files under that same number. So that's that can be helpful. Actually, another way to do that, Loanne, you, you might know this, um, but if you do a find, if you're in that catalog and you do a find and put in the, the overall number, collection number, um, it'll take you to the first record, 00129. And then you can go into browse and browse will list that and all the subfolders yeah. that are under that. Yeah, it's another way to get, get there. It's not limited to 129. I mean, you're going to see the stuff that's before it and, and after it. So, but there, there is some benefit to looking at it this way also. Well, I'm thinking if people are starting to search the website and they come in with file numbers, then we might be doing this more often where we're looking to see what exactly is in that file. Well, that's got some, that's not terribly helpful in the fact that the family files are not in past perfect. Um, however, the photos are. So if you put in a family file number, like let's just put in 1000. Okay, so we don't have anything under that. Uh, 1001. Okay, we do have something under 1001. So you will not it won't bring up anything in the family file, but it will bring up if there's a photo scanned under that under that family name. And here we have one on the end of the AB file. So it's good for looking up pictures. Um, other than that, it's not going to help you with the family files. Looks like we lost Paul. So now <laughs> we have Loanne, Richard, and Cindy. Do you have any specific questions, I, any, any of you three, uh, or something you've had trouble finding in Past Perfect? Um, could you um, show us what Adam said about doing the find? Yes. Um, thank you. Yep. Yeah, if you have a number, a file number, and you know, you're only looking, you know, you want to find out 
what's in that file. You can bring up a specific catalog and you have lots of options at the top here. One of them is find with the binoculars. And then this is where you can put in a particular manuscript number and it'll bring up that record for you. So that's usually the go if you have a number, but you want to find out where where the collection is stored, the location, or okay. detail as to what's in it. You can just pull up the archives photo or library catalog and use the find feature to do that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I do have another question. Sure. When you do pull up an item in that that screen there, what and how can you identify where it's at? Whether it's in the book in the area that um, the researchers can look at, or one that is in the back that we have to go get and bring up front. Okay. Let me do. Let me do a search in keyword. Um, let's see. So I'm going to just look up James, and I'll show you the difference uh, for the locations. The blue circle of death. That's <laughs> what I say when it takes so long. There we go. Oh, geez. Now we get part of, we don't want those. Let's try that again. Okay. So here we have, I put in James as a last name. And here we have a ton of different things pop up here. So uh, first off, you have the column here at the far left, which tells you if it's a book, a photo, or a manuscript file in the archives. So if it says L, it's in the library collection, and it's a book. If it's a P, it's a photograph. And if it's an A, it's in the archives or what we call the manuscript collection. Give it, give it, give it. So I'm going to double click. No. This is a photograph. You're and Richard, if you go here to home location, it tells you it's in closed stacks one and section 1b which is the first one okay yep yeah. so closed stacks one is your room yeah i have to directly right behind, behind the reading room that's yeah. okay i'll call you back and then that'll oh, there's, be a there's four one. digit so it means it's lower i thought you jumped lower ones. Okay. um good so yeah, and if it says close stacks two, then it's in the where the in the back room. Back room. Past the hallway into the back room. Okay. After the colon, the second number is usually the aisle number. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go down and get a book Annie's for you. Annie's out there to pick me up. So if you see a record that says library in the collection, that's a book. The title is over here. But if you double click on it, it'll tell you which, not only that whether it's in the reading room or not, but which section it's in. So here you have home location, reading room, colon, family genealogies. 
So that means it's something that the visitor can either pull or you can pull for them. If it lists closed stacks here, that means it's a book in the back. Um, and then like all the books, you need the call number, which is here in order to locate it. 9.9.2, 929.2. Does that make sense? Which means that one's out with the, where the desk are at, where the, all the, everybody can sit and go gather and pull them out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So you know, we only have we have only of the three rooms. We have the reading room, the closed stacks one, and the closed stacks two. It'll get a little different when we move to the new facility, but actually, we'll we we'll only have two rooms then, so that's good. <laughs> Something I've used sometimes on on the books. It gives you a little description. Mm -hmm. Particularly if it's something small, sometimes it helps to know what size book I'm looking for or what color. Yes, yes. good idea, Luann. Yeah, there are some helpful things. Pardon me jumping around. Um, well, here, I'm going to sort just to make it easier to see. So I sorted by archives first, then... That's a lot of archival files with that name in it. Okay. Get through all those and we should go to the library books. So again, if you go into the library books by double clicking on the title or yeah, on the library, what Luann is talking about is you have the call number here, you have the location here, and then down here you have a little thing called physical description. This gives you basically a physical description of the book. So when you go to the shelf, you can look for a book that it's, it's a, over 300 pages, so it's not a little book, and it has a blue cover. So that's handy to have uh, the description like that. Um, Nicole, this I think I know the answer to this question, but um, are we able to do some kind of search by um, search for the description in Past Perfect? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> It, it might be, uh, I'm not sure, let's try it. Are you thinking like red? <laughs> red is yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about somebody <laughs> who comes in and says, I was looking at this red book last week yeah. and I can't remember, yeah. That's a long running joke amongst librarians. <laughs> I forget, I forget the book, but I think it was red. You're right. Um, well, let's see. Um, it should be possible. You have hand cover instead of hard cover. Oh, <laughs> good point. Well, let's just try red since we don't know what the cover was. So let's just see what happens. I have a feeling it's gonna bring up a great many things. And uh, that might not be as helpful as you'd hope. <laughs> How about searching results only for the red hard cover? Oh, well, you'd have to know a little bit more about your subject first. Um, um, you could try red and uh, if you know it's a family book, you could try 929.2. Yeah, look at that red, yeah. Okay, well, let's see. Um, how's the best way to do that? You could try red and then you could put in uh, genealogy. Although I'd put it with an asterisk because it's probably going to come up genealogies with the IES. So yeah, 
it's possible. It's a, it's not easy, but it's possible. <laughs> Now you just searched everything again. Wouldn't it have been faster if you'd done results uh, only? No, or because not? I searched because I searched the library catalog only. Okay. Well, so what happened? I, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, what is I'm sorry. Um, what is results only? What is that? Results only, results only is an option. For instance, let's see. Say you have your first search and then you remember, um, let's see. You're like, well, I wanna see if they have something just on, it's if you, it's if you wanna sort down further. I'm trying to think of a good example here. I don't know with that, but I do that sometimes if I search the last name and then after we get that and see what's there, then we go for the first name and I'll do a results okay. only search. Let's try oh. that. Um, let's try Bankert. You're on library. Yeah, I know, but it'll work. Um, well, okay, I'll do archives just so we get a few more options. Yeah. Bankert. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's some options. And Loanne's saying that you can sort down this, you can take this search and go even farther by clicking on results only, which is up here at the top. And you can put in Marilyn. Marlin, Marlin, okay. okay, here we go. So you can try that. Unfortunately, it does delete all your past, you know, your last search when you do that. But if you wanna, if you wanna try to find, after you bring up a big, let's try Smizer again. You bring up a big last name and you just want to see if there's any mention of a first name. You can do that by hitting results only. It'll just do a secondary search of your results. So oh, okay. results only and do Mary. So it, it cut your search to 50 out of 400. So a lot of Mary's in there. <laughs> um, so it's an option. It's an option. That's really interesting. That's yeah. interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Autopsies. Mm. It's a little disturbing, but okay. Now you're going to have some, comp some complications with this in that past perfect is bringing up every record that has the name Mary in it. So it's not just every Mary Smizer. It's this record has all these names in it and there's a Mary in here somewhere. So you have to deal with that and there's nothing you can do about that, but unless you put in Mary Smizer to begin with, and then it'll only give you, actually, no, that's not true, is it, Adam? It's not going to give me just the Mary. Oh, no, it's it's going to give you the same thing. No, I don't think um, that's no perfect. To, doesn't have. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't have the functionality that newspapers.com does, where you can put it in uh, quotation marks and just limit it to that. No, unfortunately, he's right. It does not. Um, um, yeah, you're looking. Every single record here has um, the word Mary and the word Smizer in it somewhere, but not necessarily together. Yeah. Things like that. I mean, you can you can throw in another keyword, but sometimes you just have to go through them and look. And here we got lucky. Here's a Mary Smizer's confirmation certificate. There you go. And you had two images. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I definitely appreciate your time and your patience this morning.
Is there anything you'd like to look at before we sign off? Uh, be happy to bring up anything we talked about earlier. Um, um, I'm good. Um, Cindy? No, I was just gonna say that I don't have any further questions. Okay. Nicole, maybe we should show everyone what's new on Family Search. Okay. Um, that's a good idea. Why don't we do that? Okay. Okay. So can everyone see my public drive here? Mm -hmm. I'm going into internet shortcuts and I'm scrolling down to family search. Now we do have a couple things here. Um, we have a list of York County records that Lynn Nelson put together as well as directions on how to get to them. So that's, all, that's also an internet shortcuts for ease of use. And it does list the York County records that you can find on Family Search. Or you can go right into Family Search and start that way. Nicole, does that document have hyperlinks or is it just a description? It does have hyperlinks. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, it is an option. Granted, um, unless they have changed something. So yeah, I was able to go into the will books by clicking, going through Lynn's listing. And here we have will books A through BB uh, that you can view. It has a little key over it, which I'm, I'm wondering if that means you have to be a family search affiliate to look at it. Nicole, I don't think people are seeing. Oh, we're not no, seeing it, it froze. Oh, well, poo. Okay, hang on. <laughs> okay, let me try this, see if I can get back into it for you. Okay. I think when it went to the website, it, it didn't. There we go. Okay. So here I've gotten into the will book books from the document with the shortcuts. And this is where they have the list of will books A through C or BB actually. Um, before I put in our password, there was a little key over top of this camera which makes me think that this is restricted to affiliate libraries only, which yeah, that's, we, are, that's, which we yeah, are. That's correct. That's correct. If there's a key, then it is restricted. But not if you're here on site using our sign-in. So yay, yay for that. So this is what it looks like when you bring up the county records. Um, and it, it takes a little practice and, but there's options for searching this as well. Adam, did you wanna look at anything in particular or just? Uh, I just wanted to show people the things we discovered that they uploaded the other week. Okay. And where would we go to do that? If, if, you, uh, if you click the back arrow, go back to that previous screen, mm -hmm. um, you should be able to click under locality subjects, that blue line, and then just, just under that under subjects. Here? No. No. Uh, scroll down. Oh, sorry. Ah, locality. So, ah, okay. Look, yeah. locality. United States, yes. Pennsylvania, York. Oh, that's going to take you to the probate records. Okay. Um, 
I thought it was more sophisticated than, than that. Um, well, there's a lot on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, back to just, I can go back so the, to just York. Yeah, the basic, the basic way to do it is um, to go under search at the top of the screen and then um, catalog. Okay. No, go, go back, up, go back yes. to search. Um, I guess you can try. It. Yeah, you can try it that way. And then under place, I just type in York. And then you want United States, Pennsylvania, York. And online. Or I guess you could do any and see what happens. Yeah, this is great. This gives you everything that they have cataloged right. under York. Um, and they've added quite a bit. In fact, yeah. just at the end of September, they did a major upload of resources. We're still kind of getting a handle on just what is in that upload, but. Right. If you go under genealogy, I think that's where the family reports are. So there's hours and hours of entertainment here <laughs> for the genealogist. Yes. Yeah, we've 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 realized that our geneal genealogical reports are also on here, although not not all of them and not in their entirety. Right. There is one thing you have to realize that. Family Search had access to certain documents, and Ancestry had access to certain documents. Some are being shared, some aren't. So you may have to look at one location for, like, say, a census in 1920. Ancestry has. 1910, Ancestry doesn't have it, but Family Search have it. So you have, yeah. to, have to watch some of those as well. I noticed that. <laughs> That's a good point, Richard. Yeah, it's good to check both, both of those. Not entirely sure. How, oh, digital version. Okay. So here's an example of one of our genealogical reports. It's kind of odd the way it's described here. Genealogical reports, 11, uh, page 11, or volume 11. Um, I'm having trouble reading that. Let's see. There we go. Does everyone see that? This this is probably going to be similar to what we have in book form here in our collection. So anyway, lots of resources for those at home. Okay. Alrighty. Anything else anybody want to look at? Or shall we call it a day? Okay. Alrighty. Well, I really want to thank you all for being here. Paul, Richard, Loanne, Cindy, uh, other Cindy. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole and Adam. Good. I hope it was helpful. And again, we'll have this recording uh, available on YouTube, and I'll send you a link to that. So. I still need to watch the genealogy one that you did last Sunday. So I'm that's all right. There's, that's okay. I can never keep up with all the stuff that's online either, but <laughs> there's a lot. 
lot there for you um, to look Thank at. Thank you. Please see you tomorrow. Yeah, let us know if you have any questions at any time. So have a good one. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.